Welcome to this video conference coverage program highlighting key data on multi-cancer early detection presented at the 2024 American Association for Cancer Research Annual Meeting in San Diego, California. The 2024 American Society of Clinical Oncology Annual Meeting in Chicago, Illinois and the 2024 National Comprehensive Cancer Network Annual Conference in Orlando, Florida. In this series of six chapters, our experts, internal medicine physician Richard Whittington and oncologist Gautam Agarwal will discuss the most recent data on MSED tests presented at these oncology conferences, including clinical trial data, real-world experience, and post hoc analyses from previous clinical trials, modeled benefits of MSED test usage, novel tests in development, and the impact of MSED screening on quality of life and health and screening disparities. Dr. Agawal, let's now talk about presentations on multi-cancer early detection in active clinical trials and later stages of development. Thanks a lot. So the field of multi-cancer early detection is definitely very active in terms of clinical trials that are enrolling. And this is important so that as a clinician, you know what trial could be applicable to your patient to potentially participate in even and to know the current landscape. We'll touch upon a few of those right now. So one of the ones that was presented at the AACR by Gay Newland et al. was the performance of a multi-analyte, multi-cancer early detection test that's based upon blood in a prospectively collected cohort. And that's gonna be the theme for most of these, prospectively cohort. The test is Cancer Guard, formerly known as uh, Cancer Seek. This looked at the first analysis of their refined multi-biomarker class that looked at methylation and protein samples from the ASEN2 uh, cohort. They looked at around 6,314 patients, 1,400 of which had a diagnosis of cancer and 4,888 that had no cancer. And what they found was looking at that analysis of those patients, they saw that it's achieved a specificity of 99%, which is similar to other tests, and a sensitivity of around 49.9%, which is also similar to some existing tests. It was a sensitivity of around 55% of patients for cancers without a standard screening uh, for average risk populations. So in conclusion, uh, you know, this particular study uh, was similar in performance, and as we know, it had a higher sensitivity for non screening detectable cancers. Another study that was presented at AACR by Yang et al. looked at a test called CANSCAN that was recently awarded FDA breakthrough device designation in January of 2024. This was presented at AACR to show interim results from this large prospective cohort study looking at multi-cancer early detection in an average risk population looking at fragmentomics which is another type of cell-free DNA test. This test was an annuals test that was given to these patients, around 3,724 patients, ages 45 to 75, so it was a little different. Some of the other tests looked at age 50, and this one looked at a little bit younger at age 45. Their ultimate goal is to enroll 15,000 patients. Right now they've had 3,700, so this was an interim result. It looked at 13 cancer types, bile duct cancer, breast, cervical, colorectal, endometrial, esophageal, gastric, liver, lung, lymphoma, ovarian, pancreatic, and actually including prostate cancer. The primary objective was to evaluate the diagnostic performance of this test in early detection. And the secondary was to look at the cancer signal of origin and its performance. It had a similar specificity as a test uh, for the gallery pathfinder study, as well as the previous cancer seek test that we've discussed at 97.9%. The sensitivity was around 87%, which is actually, if you can notice the difference, it was a higher sensitivity, likely due to the fact that they were looking at lesser number of cancers, around 13. The cancer signal of origin was somewhat similar to the other studies, looking at 84.6% of the top two predicted cancers of origin. And so when we look at the conclusion, this was a, uh, another 
potential opportunity for uh, specific cancer screening if you're looking at those 13 cancers that your patients may have and uh, could be enrolled in this uh, study. Another test that's in process that we'll discuss that's presented at AACR, there's actually two that we'll talk about, Seek and Care and then OncoSeq. These are also large scale tests looking at thousands of patients. The first one, Seek and Care, enrolled around is one in 1,203 individuals who received the test as a laboratory developed test. This looks at cell-free DNA and seven plasma tumor markers, looking at fragment size, different kind of oncogenic viruses and different type of sequence aberrations and copy number variations to help determine whether the patient has cancer or not. And it also had a 97% specificity, 60% sensitivity. So it's kind of, we're noticing a pattern here that when they're looking at multi-omics and multiple cancer types, that sensitivity comes to around 50% and specificity comes to 96%. When you lessen the number of cancers that you're looking for, that sensitivity increases. The OncoSeq test, looking at Mao et al. at the AACR, and it looked at predicting cancer risk for some of the higher prevalent cancers uh, that have the highest risk. So breast, colorectal, liver, lung, lymphoma, esophageal, pancreas, stomach. Um, it includes the seven uh, protein markers in addition to that cell-free DNA. And so we'll see how these tests perform over time. These are very exciting new tests. Uh, you're looking at a meta-analysis. When you look at all these combined, it's kind of similar where we said that performance is 98% to 97% specificity, 65% uh, sensitivity. The Pathfinder study by Gallery, Pathfinder 2, is also still enrolling patients and has a similar performance uh, at that next generation of their test. Another study by Feng et al. that was that AACR presented this year was looking at a study that's going to compare the mortality versus stage-based endpoints in randomized trials of cancer screening. It was a systematic review with implications for multi-cancer screening trials. The conclusion of this was in screening randomized controlled trials, reductions in late-stage cancer versus cancer-specific mortality are correlated. So if we reduce those late-stage cancers, we don't necessarily have to wait for necessarily a mortality benefit to be seen because it is correlated. But there are differences by cancer type. Screening interventions that reduce late-stage cancer incidence do not necessarily reduce cancer-specific cancer mortality in certain types of cancer. Putting this into perspective, I'll start with the idea that I'm a primary care physician and a generalist. And as there's so many things in our lives we have to keep track of, I generally put things into boxes, appropriately or inappropriately. So I'd like your opinion, Dr. Agarwal, how I've actually kind of compiled this data in my head, which is all of these multi-cancer early detection tests seem to have realistically great specificity and wonderful um, negative predictive values. Their sensitivities are in the ballpark of testing we already do, like lung cancer screening, mammography, prostate cancer screening, and colon screening. Um, I guess the one variation that you have to really pay attention to between the tests is the positive predictive value. But I'd like your input to whether you think that I'm thinking too simplistically about this and what other things would you might add? I think you're brilliant and I think you're thinking correctly about this actually. But I do think that there's some nuances to how we're gonna approach screening in the future in our society. And part of that nuance that I've emphasized it before is, is taking into that individual risk. We also have to look at when you only have one or two moments to capture that patient's time and effort to get the maximum benefit of screening. So even if you have a negative prostate cancer screening, it doesn't mean you're not at risk for still colon, lung, breast, pancreatic cancer. And so we also want to remind that patient just because we had a negative prostate cancer screening or breast cancer screening, there are other cancers that the majority of which are unscreened for that can still cause that patient a mortality or morbidity or some type of financial impact actually if they have loss of work from that cancer. And so the majority of cancer deaths are caused by unscreened, unscreened cancers. And so we, when we have the ability to capture that patient a multi-cancer detection approach, whether it's gonna be one of these tests that we discussed in one of these trials that kind of ends up being the one that we use the most of, is likely to have a more impactful benefit on that patient's life when we do that approach. 
another thing to kind of understand is as patients become more independent and autonomous in the care they receive, they're going to want approach where it's on demand, essentially. So when they want to be screened, they should be allowed to be screened, not have to necessarily wait for a colonoscopy, wait for these things that sometimes take time to, to schedule. 100% they need to continue doing that until we know for sure these tests can perform well at these, you know, with, with these other USPTF recommended screenings. But when the patient has autonomy and says, I want to do a multi-cancer detection test, the good news is because those are blood-based typically and hopefully are easy to do for most people, that patient autonomy can come into play, allowing them to be participating in these trials or being able to get these tests. 